So Joe Biden finally wanders out to the microphones and he begins. And I have to say, I was shocked, shocked by his appearance. He has looked as though he is falling apart for a long time. He looked barely warmed over. He sounded awful. He was stumbling over every word. He was utterly incoherent. It was, it was as though he had just escaped from a nursing home. It was, it was an ama- just visually speaking, optically speaking, it was an amazingly embarrassing moment. Here's the president. Of, this is what it sounded like when, when the president of the United States said, remember, this is the day 13 American service members were murdered by terrorists on his watch because of policies he created. And instead of him coming out there and looking strong and tough, instead of him coming out there and, and looking as though our enemy should be afraid of us, he looked beaten. He looked defeated. He looked not just old, but decrepit. Here was Joe Biden yesterday. A tough day. This evening in Kabul, as you all know, terrorists attacked that we've been talking about and worried about, that the intelligence community has assessed, uh, has undertaken an attack by a group known as ISIS-K, <clears throat> took the lives of American service members. That's how he opened. That was his opening. And that alone, America's enemies must be drooling over this, over this person. They must be drooling over the dead horse that we've thrown out there. And then he moved on in his speech to paying tribute to the service members, but he couldn't help himself. He had to then brag about the effectiveness of this evacuation mission. He's still using the talking points from 48 hours ago. You remember about 48 hours ago, the administration started moving on from the talking point of this is a brilliant idea to our evacuation has been shockingly successful. You know, with the Afghans falling from the wheel wells of planes onto the tarmac. You know, the evacuation is actually a bit like we deserve credit. Yesterday, the DNC was sending out emails bragging about how successful this evacuation was, which, as I said on the show, is the equivalent of the captain of that Titanic not accidentally hitting the iceberg, deliberately looking at the iceberg, saying, I'm going to ram this sucker directly into the iceberg. The boat starts taking on water. He rushes up to the top deck. He unleashes the lifeboats. He says, everybody in the lifeboats, two thirds of the people get out. And he says, what an unbelievable captain I am. I have set the Guinness Book of World Records record for the most people evacuated from a lifeboat. Okay, that is what the administration has been doing. So he's paying tribute to the service members yesterday who deserve all the credit in the world, but he can't help himself praising his own mission here. These American service members who gave their lives, it's an overused word, but it's totally appropriate here, were heroes. Heroes who have been engaged in a dangerous, selfless mission to save the lives of others. They're a part of an airlift, an evacuation effort unlike any scene in history, with more than 100,000 American citizens American partners, Afghans who helped us, and others taken to safety. Again, that's him praising his own mission. That's him praising his own mission, which is a failure. Okay, then Joe Biden did what the media love when he does. He did the empathy thing, right? And and by empathy, it means that he 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 tried to speak to what it feels like to be in this. You know what? None of those families would be mourning their sons and daughters today. None of them, if it had not been for this man's policies. So. I wonder how many of them really want to hear it from the president of the United States. But this is what he was elected to do. He was elected to empathize, not to proceed with good policy, not to protect Americans, because we're going to leave at the very least hundreds, probably thousands of Americans and green card holders behind enemy lines. He was elected to emote. He's the emoter in chief. And so here he was last night trying to paper over his gross incompetence and malpractice with a bit of uh, with a bit of sentimentality. We have some sense, like many of you do, what the families of these brave heroes are feeling today. You get this feeling like you're being sucked into a black hole in the middle of your chest. There's no way out. My heart aches for you. This is utterly insincere. I'm sorry, it is. You are responsible for that policy. You're responsible for, like, I'd love to hear from the members of the military families as to what they feel, because there are 17 million people who've served in the American military over the 
over the course of time who are alive in the United States right now. 800,000 people have served in Afghanistan proper. And I've talked to many, many Afghan veterans, Afghan war veterans over the course of the last several weeks. I can't name one of them who wants to hear emoting from Joe Biden as he proceeds to, to, to sully their legacy, subject all of their allies to the threat of death from the Taliban, and now to actual death at the hands of ISIS-K. Okay, then Joe Biden had to uh, make excuses for the Taliban, right? So here's part of the policy. Part of the policy is now, just as it was with the Iran deal with the Obama administration, that once you make a deal with the devil, you have to make excuses for why the devil isn't actually the, the devil. Now Joe Biden is making excuses for the Taliban. So remember, the entire incentive structure for the Taliban to protect Americans as they leave is that if the Taliban don't, we might stay and retaliate against them. But Joe Biden has removed all of that by making excuses for the Taliban because he has to cover his own political ass in case the Taliban turn out to be the bad guys we know they are. So here he was yesterday blaming ISIS-K, but relieving the Taliban of responsibility. That was the important thing. Over the past few weeks, I know you're many of you are probably tired of hearing me say it. Yes. We've been made aware by our intelligence community that the ISIS-K an arch enemy, the Taliban, people who were freed when both those prisons were opened, has been planning a complex set of attacks on the United States personnel and others. This is why, from the outset, I've repeatedly said this mission was extraordinarily dangerous and on why I've been so determined to limit the duration of this mission. Okay, so our mushmouth president then makes a mush-headed argument. This is his argument all the way through. If bad things happen in Afghanistan because we took the cork out of the bottle, then clearly they would have happened if we hadn't taken the cork out of the bottle. That is the argument. So if if we did X and Y happened, then certainly if we had not done X, Y definitely would have happened, but way worse. I'm sorry, but your counterfactual no longer applies. You did X and Y happened. And it was perfectly predictable that Y would happen. So by the way, he's now making excuses for why we should cut and run. So there is a bombing. It kills Americans. Instead of him saying, we're going to stay long enough to get every American citizen out. And if you touch us, we will kill you, which is what any normal American president would say. His argument is, look, something bad happened yesterday. That's an excuse for us to get out even faster. It just shows why we need to get out super fast. Okay, then Joe Biden says, we, uh, we're, we're going to complete the mission. Okay, but of course, he has defined the mission as getting out by August 31st. The timeline is the mission for Joe Biden. Normally, you define the timeline on the back of what you need to accomplish. Normally, if I decide that we need, as a company, to achieve a certain thing, we then say, how long will it take to achieve this thing? And then we define the timeline by what we are seeking to achieve. In this particular case, Joe Biden defined the timeline, and the mission is now the timeline, which means a lot of people are going to get stuck over there. Here is Joe Biden trying to make excuses for this. We can and we must complete this mission, and we will. And that's what I've ordered them to do. We will not be deterred by terrorists. We will not let them stop our mission. We will continue the evacuation. I've also ordered my commanders to develop operational plans to strike ISIS-K assets, leadership, and facilities. We will respond with force and precision at our time, at the place we choose, in the moment of our choosing. Okay, that part is the best part, right? So he says, we're going to get them. We're going after them. We're going to, sometime in the future... Later, when I want to, not right now. That's what that means. That means ISIS just killed Americans and they're going to get away with it because guess what? In three days, okay, it is now the 27th. In three to four days, we are gone. We do not have any assets on the ground. We do not have any allies on the ground. We don't have eyes on the ground. Okay, all this talk about how we are going to go after the ISIS, he, he's hoping you forget. That's what's going to happen here. If that's what he's hoping. Of course he wasn't going to say, because for him to retaliate now means you need more troops on the ground, not fewer. So instead, he's just doing this. We'll push it off, you know. We'll, we'll get them at a time. It sounds strong. It is actually weak, obviously. Okay, and then uh, he just tells a series of lies that are meant to make you feel comfortable, but, but are just lies. Here's what you need to know. These ISIS terrorists will not win. We will rescue the Americans. Nope. We will get our Afghan allies. 
Nope. And our mission will go on. Nope. America will not be intimidated. Nope. Has four direct lies in, I mean, five actually, in a row. The ISIS terrorists will not win. They already have you handed them Kabul. We will rescue the Americans in there. You're not. We haven't been doing large scale extraction missions to rescue Americans in there. And you've already admitted hundreds, if not thousands of Americans will remain after we leave. We'll get our Afghan allies out. Nope. You just handed a list of them to the Taliban so the Taliban can go shoot them and kill their families. Our mission will go on. Nope. Your mission is over in four days. America will not be intimidated. Too late, you jackass. Too late. You're the president of the United States babbling nonsensically like a mental ward patient about how the Taliban are our friends now. Okay, there's more of this. Okay, it didn't stop. It didn't stop. And by the way, we haven't even gotten to the series of lies that led up to this because that this man is a damned liar and Americans are dead because this man is a liar. And thousands of Americans and American green heart holders are stuck under the auspices of the Taliban because this man is a fool and a liar and a disgrace to his office. All right, so President Biden's lies and foolishness didn't stop last night halfway through his little address. He continued along these lines. He, he tried to blame everybody except for himself. So as we'll see later, he tried to blame Trump. But he blamed his military commanders by saying, it's, you know, we were all unanimous on this. Um, no, you weren't. And we have information suggesting your military commanders were basically all warning you back in February, March, that this was going to happen. And you ignored them because you are a nitwit. Here is our, our nitwitted president of the United States. There has been complete unanimity from every commander on the objectives of this mission. Nope. Nope. Unless by unanimity on the objectives of the mission, you mean you told them exactly what you wanted to happen and how many troops they could have to do it. And then they had to somehow scramble to make that happen for you. OK, so Joe Biden concludes his speech. And again, so much of this was optic as well. If you watched it in real time, he's just not there. He's not there. I won't even say that the lights are on, but nobody's home. The lights are not even on. Several of the light bulbs are out. There was the president of the United States who was an embarrassing display last night. May God bless you all. and May God protect his troops and all those standing watch for America. We have so much to do. It's within our capacity to do it. We just have to remain steadfast. Steadfast. We will complete our mission and we will continue after our troops have withdrawn to find means by which we can find any American who wishes to get out of Afghanistan. We will find them and we will get them out. So that is him admitting that Americans are going to be left behind fully in his doddering and confused fashion. Okay, then he took a few questions from a list. As always. And he admits right up front, they gave me a list. Who is they? You know, have you ever heard? He, it's such a weird tick. And he does it nearly all the time now. They gave me a list. Who, your night nurse? Who gave you the list? Why do you have a list? Why can't you just call on people? Are you incapable of pointing your finger? Here was Joe Biden explaining. They, they, they you know, the same nice lady who, uh, who, who gives me my pills every morning gave me this list here. Ladies and gentlemen, they gave me a list here. The first person I was instructed to call on was Kelly O'Donnell of NBC. The first person I was instructed to call on. What in the actual 